Welcome to the Home Building Hub, your essential podcast guide to building your new home. Hosted by industry experts Colin Bischoff and Darren Brennan, this conversational podcast will help better educate you about all things new home building so you can avoid costly mistakes and enjoy your building experience to the fullest, no matter which home builder you choose. Hey there folks, Colin here and welcome to the Home Building Hub. I am here with co-host Darren Brennan as always. Today guys, we're going to talk to you a little bit about a thing called co-living. We're going to talk about uh, whether it is, or what, like, what it is, how it works, all that sort of stuff, but um, whether it's, I guess, the future of high yield and capital growth combined. So yeah, buckle up, get ready to roll. How are you going today, Daz? Mate, I'm going fantastic and you've kicked off with high yield and capital growth and i'm going to kick off with we don't give any financial <laughs> advice whatsoever we're just having a chat about two blokes having a chat about something that, that's pretty interesting out there and to be completely fair colin i'm going to be firing all the questions at you today because i'm not an expert on this whatsoever and i know you've done a lot of work in this space and a, and a uh, certainly far ahead of this than than I am. So I'm looking forward to today to just sit back and relax, shoot a few questions at you, let you do all the talking, and um, mate, we'll fly through this episode. But I'm going to kick it off by saying, so you mentioned um, high yield, high return, etc. Right, but we're talking about co living today, right? So this is about giving you an understanding of what it is. And as I said, I'm far from an expert. And what I do here, though, is people talk about co-living and they are never quite on point about what it is. So today's mm. hopefully going to clear a fair bit of that up. And basically what this is about is trying to give you some level of idea of the different inclusions and stuff that would come in a co-living home, right? So the difference is there. Ultimately, what makes uh, you know potential buyers aware of you know what the options are when they're purchasing this type of property, right? And it's not a new concept; it's been around a while, right? But it's, I guess, just not commonly known about what it is and how to go about it, and, and even how to facilitate putting it together if you're a landlord and how to manage it best. And I think that's what hopefully today will give a little bit more insight into. You know, we've spoken a few times, um, you know, and I know you've been working on this project for you guys, um, and um, I've been really quite interested in what it is, And and but there's a lot going on in the background that you need to be across, you know, that, yeah. that certainly I'm not. So let's fire the questions at you, mate. Mm. Higher level, tell us what co-living is. Yeah. No, good, good intro. I think um, the one thing I'll just reconfirm, it, it's not new. It's not us saying this is a brand new thing. It's been around for quite a few years. Um, I would say it's been uh, more so in Queensland. They sort of kicked it off is my understanding. A couple of builders that did that and they do a really good job of it. Um, and then it's definitely available in Victoria uh, as a product. But when I talk to people about this product, Darren, most I say, what do you know what co living is? And they they all say, yeah, yeah, yeah I know what it is. And they they say what they think it is, and and it's incorrect. So we thought we'd just do an episode. It's not about selling co living. It's about telling you what it is, telling you how it works, all that sort of stuff. That's the point of this. Okay, so let's start. Your first question was, what is co living? So co living designs essentially they are fully furnished homes that include like shared common spaces whilst each tenant is given a lockable uh, private room with access to their own personal ensuite and um, or in, that, in some cases a bathroom, dual way access to a bathroom. So essentially, because we, we're uh, in an audio format at the moment, Darren, obviously, yeah. and we're not sharing a screen or, or anything, picture this, like a normal house, a 22 square home, four beds, two living even, doesn't really matter. Basically, what we're doing to, to convert that to co-living is we're going to maybe drop off the fourth bed or leave it there, but we're going to convert and add an extra ensuite, right? So you've got a, a bed, you've got three bedrooms, two of them have ensuites, and then the third one is connected directly to the bathroom. So you've essentially got three rooms with three ensuites or access to bathroom that the, the lockable and they're private. But the common areas such as, you know, the kitchen, dining and the living, that's their common space, you know, uh, as tenants. So that's what it is in terms of a product. Um, and now I, I'll talk a bit more about fully furnished later, but co-living designs, 
here in Victoria, you can actually accommodate up to three tenants without leaping from a standard all day, every day house, which is what we call class 1A. Now, this is one of the most common misconceptions is there's the next step for us is to go to class 1B. If we're going to build that, there's additional requirements in terms of uh, you know, disability uh, requirements or fire safety requirements and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. It's far more complex to build a 1B class home, e.g. moving through to an NDIS and all that sort of stuff, than it is. Just what we're saying is class 1A property with an extra ensuite and a, f- a few other goodies, that's what co-living is. So it's, it's a simplified step up rather than a complex class 1B sort of process. So up to three tenants in Victoria is allowed, Darren, um, and, and that's where we start leading to that potential higher yield, more rent, because each tenant is paying, um, you know, 250 or 300 bucks for their room. Okay, so that times three is actually more than what you'd get if you had one family renting your investment property, as an example. Um, and and that, in, in that sense for the tenant, you know, they've got, um, you know, potentially cheaper than renting a full home. They may yeah. not need it. You know what I mean? Like it, it actually works for both parties, doesn't it really? Yeah, it does. Yeah. I've got a little bit more detail on that um, in, in some of the dot points we've got below. But certainly one of the things that appeals to me, Darren, is great. It's fantastic for an investor to go, yeah, I'm getting three times the rent and all this sort of stuff or three lots of rent, higher yield and putting it in an area that's got capital growth. That's fantastic. And I'm happy for all investors that do that. But I'm probably more happy that this is a solution that is helping combat the rental crisis and the yeah, higher absolutely. interest rates and the people who don't need a whole home, they just need a private yeah. room, a single professional, whatever it may be, this actually helps. It contributes to combating the, you know, I guess the, the rental crisis, you know, rather than sure. another investor with just one tenant as a family. For example, um, you, you, you're actually ticking the boxes for three tenants, you know, so you're really yeah, contributing true. in a positive way. Um, so, Colin, do you need to um, do you need to have a, like a different set of, I guess, inclusions on the home? Would that be something you need to sort of lean towards? And I'm, you know, um, I'm sure there'd be bits and pieces you need to do in the home to make it. Yep. Yeah, and and, and I'm going to say make it. Ready. I'm not going to say compliant because I don't understand the compliance of it, but to make it ready so it's ready for them to move in. And if it's ready for them to move in, then it should be compliant. Yeah, there, there are, Darren. So I think uh, trying to get people to visualize this, just remember a normal house, we're adding an ensuite, um, and that helps get, you know, three tenants. It helps affordability and loneliness, social isolation, those sorts of things. Um, and one thing I'd want to highlight before I answer that, it's not about student housing. There's actually a really large market of single professionals and even people in their you know, single females in their 50s, for example, is one of the most emerging markets of people looking for this product. Right? So you, know, you know what I mean? So you're looking for people who are not coming in to throw parties. People just want yeah. their private space. And, and part of those inclusions are obviously lockable room and access to your own pantry uh, cupboard yeah. and your own ensuite, right? Privacy, number one. Number two is... Uh, additional, I guess, PowerPoints to that room, TV point, data point, those sorts of things, so they can have everything they need from that front. The most important one for me is uh, split systems. So having what we would do in in our case is we would actually remove ducted heating and we would put in um, four split systems throughout the house. So three bedrooms have one each and then the common living area will have a bigger split system. Now, nice. that obviously enables the, the tenant. If you've got someone who gets, gets really cold easily and someone who gets really hot easily, you can't just run the same temperature. So they can run their own temperature in their own room, um, which is obviously much more appealing when, you, when you're getting your tenants through, um, which uh, that's probably a really pivotal one. Obviously, an additional ensuite, you know, with the toilet, the shower, towel, towel <laughs> roll. Oh, geez, toilet roll holder. The... Um, I don't know what happened there, Daz. The microphone nearly fell over. Um, those <laughs> We're sorts still of things. hearing you loud and clear, mate. It's all, all right. good. Yeah, so they're probably the main ones, uh, I would say. It's not a huge step up, which is why it's a more palatable option for investors because yep. it's, it's, okay, additional ensuite, a couple of locks on pantry cupboards and uh, some extra split systems, and that's pretty much loosely what, what's required to get you there. Yeah. For sure. I know um, when we spoke a couple of weeks ago about this, one bit that I was sort of 
trying to get my head around um, was um, the need to have it fully furnished, number yeah. one, and then also how's it being managed? Like you've obviously got a rental agent, real estate agent, rental agent, but how's that part, um, you know, the property management side of it run? Maybe give us a bit of detail on that. Yeah, so furniture packs and property management, um, I'll split them up a bit. So furniture pack, co-living design needs to be fully furnished because what tenants are seeking, now remember these tenants we're talking about, they they don't come with a dining room table and a couch, right? They, they're, they're what they call suitcase ready tenants. Okay, so they want to walk into a home that is fully furnished that they can, they can just, you know, bring in the suitcases and, and they're done. So you as the owner will need to provide that. Now, thankfully, there are property management companies out there that as part of their property management service, they will provide a furniture pack all done, right? So one of the, I guess we, we've got one that we deal with ourselves and it doesn't matter who that is because you can find whoever you like. But in that case, they give a furniture pack, which includes actually, Darren, a really extensive list. So I'm talking about a bed, bedside tables, bins, artwork, all that stuff just in your room. And they give dining room table, couches, uh, all that sort of stuff, the TVs, everything, TV in each room. Right down to the pegs, the iron, the you know the washing machine, the dryer, the fridge, wow. the kettle, the toaster, the the cutlery. It's all in one big pack. They've done it a hundred times before. Well, more than that, and it's nice and simple. So usually a furniture pack. People are thinking, well, how much is all this stuff, right? To bolt on a um, the ensuite, the split systems, and the inclusions that we mentioned before, allow for you know twenty or thirty k, right, on top of a normal house. To bolt on a furniture pack is about 25K, depending on who you're going through. So you're sort of looking at 40, 50K more than a um, standard house and land package or standard house price. Uh, but I guess the returns are uh, there to offset that. So, now, given these uh, uh, investment properties too, you know, we had Theo from, um, from Depreciation, Tax Appreciation Australia. Australia, yeah. Yep. On, you know, Having someone like that in your in your um, camp, I guess, helping you through all that side, all that stuff would be definitely very quickly depreciated, and just adds to the reasons of why you do it, right? Yep. So, you know, you, one, you're getting a greater return, but two, you're going to get this really cool depreciation too. So, yep. no, I'm not an expert on that. Theo is though, and he's awesome. We did an episode with Theo a few weeks ago. Mm. Um, and it'd be well worth reaching out to and understanding you, how that's You can going. get that, Darren. So we've actually got a schedule done, a depreciation yeah, cool. schedule for the furniture pack. Fantastic. Obviously, you can get it for a new home as well. So there's actually quite a, a good good amount you can you can pull back from that, which is helpful. And I guess one of the most important things that I really want to highlight, um, the property management company that you choose is absolutely pivotal and vital. You must choose one that, and, and it is imperative that you choose one that already has a strong track record in co-living spaces. And the reason for that is they're going to help you with the furniture pack, which should include the delivery, the unboxing, the placement, the commissioning, and even the rubbish removal, things that you wouldn't even think of until I've just highlighted them right now. They need to do all that. They also need to um, have a good, safe process and, and logical process to get the tenants right so do they have proper agreements in place with a tenancy agreement per tenant with um, a set of house rules that they all commit to and things like that all that needs to be done by people who know what they're doing so that it's airtight so that there's no gaps in what it is that you're providing and what your tenants are expecting um, when people overuse uh, you know the, the split system in their room to, the heat is on all day or the cool is on all day they have they have contingencies for all that to make sure that um, it, it's all well, with, well, I guess, well looked after. Been on holidays for two months and left it running. Yeah, yeah so the, the, all that stuff's been looked at and addressed before um, through many lessons over the years, I think. Um, of course. Yeah, so uh, just, to, just to say that that property management company is key. Uh, that's something that you would, uh, I guess, enlist and engage yourself, but we'd be happy to put you in touch with them. But it's more around, okay, you get a normal house and land package with some differences in, in inclusions because it's co-living. The design's yeah. slightly different. Um, um, but, yeah, once that's done, you can go and meet with the property management company early uh, or a couple and select, you know, who you want and, and go from there. Yeah, very cool. Um, I guess uh, maybe there's some good reasons why you'd want to choose 
a co-living investment property over a traditional investment property. Obviously, um, the financials are pretty attractive. Run us through some of what you see out there happening in that space. Yeah. Uh, look, we have to be careful here because it all depends on, you know, your design and your location, all that sort of stuff. But in theory, what, what I need people to try and understand is that you, you're getting three lots of rent instead of one. So naturally, it's going to earn, you know, it could earn eight to $900 a week instead of a, a five or a 600 for the same area. Um, same size property, that is absolutely possible. And these are backed by appraisals provided by a co-living uh, property management company. So they'll give you that appraisal up front. So high rental income, Darren, is, is probably one of the most amazing things that pop up. Yeah. Um, there are additional costs up front you need to offset as well, right? So the furniture pack and stuff like that. So it's not all, it's not all just one way traffic. You need people to understand that there's a bit of a process to understanding how this works. So we're trying to get you to understand a little bit more, educate you on that so you can have those discussions with a broker, with an accountant, with the people you need to to make sure the numbers stack up for you. Um, cash flow positive, I think that's something that hasn't been seen for a while. So that, that positively geared property, you can definitely get yourself in that position. You've got the right house, the right location. High, therefore, high yield capital growth leads to those. So again, in our case, you know, we pick the right, the right blocks, the right locations. Uh, because that's what we do all day, every day, right? So we can help clients do that. For a normal house and land package, it's no different for this. It's just a different design, you know? Yeah. So uh, yeah. risk mitigation is one, Darren. So rental, multiple rental agreements in place means that, you, you know, if your tenant says, no, nah, I'm done and moves out, well, thankfully, you, you should have two more tenants there. So um, that, that's something. I was thinking about one myself. Yep. Uh, you know, what a, what a savvy that bit would be. You know, you could have... A tenant move out, but you've still got rental stream coming in from the other ones that are still remaining there. So, mm. you know, or you're having difficulty renting it out, but you've got one tenant, so you're getting some money, you know, and then you pick up your second, you pick up your third, yeah, and away you go. So, I think that's a really cool part of it, absolutely. Well, look, one thing on top of that, the, the property management company we use, and, and most or a lot of the reason we use them, other than their, their experience, is they actually provide 75% guarantee on rent. So, yeah, cool. um, but on top of that, they provide a five-year rental guarantee. Yeah, so basically, right. you get it. You've got five years, you're locked in at 75% minimum. So if you do the maths on that, if you lose a tenant, they're going to put one in there because it's in their best interest. You know, they're going to make yeah, sure well, that they're coming. It's already costing you money. That's right. So that, you've got some comfort and some you know, good fallback position. And I'd say the, um, one of the other things is high resale value, Darren. And we'll talk about it a little bit later um, in a bit more detail, but the home we're talking about is not greatly different to a normal house and land package, right? An everyday home. It's just got an extra ensuite, really, at the end of the day. That's what that is. And a so few door locks and stuff. Yeah, it's a few not- extra door locks, which you can, you can take off with, with a screwdriver. Like, it's not a massive deal. And those, in terms of resale, it's just a nice appealing house and land package. So you've got a, what I would say is you've got a much better exit strategy than going through some of those other areas that are spruced to NDIS and dual key properties and stuff like that. This is really going to appeal to the broader market, which is obviously enabling an investor to sell it to a family who has a teenager who wants an ensuite or a family yeah. who has a mum or dad or you know parents come over and stay quite often things like that because you've got the extra ensuite if anything it adds a bit of value to the home for sure um, obviously um yeah. this is helping the rental crisis and we know that's a a big issue out there the government is spooking on about it all the time at the moment this you know shortage of homes and obviously this means that you can have um you know a, essentially three individuals or or potentially even three couples, I guess. Um, I don't know how that part works. But maybe you could touch on that too. But um, essentially you could have what would have been three different properties needed all jammed into one or all placed into one, not jammed, all placed into one where they're really comfortable. So that's helping with the rental crisis. But give us a bit of a rundown on that. Yep. So first thing I say, the, the, the leases would be individual leases, not couples, because that would mean six tenants, which is not allowed. Yep. Sure. Um, what that means, the reason for three tenants, Darren, is that it, if you move into a fourth tenant, it triggers the need for Class 1B, basically, yeah, is yeah. my understanding. So more requirements, more needs, like rooming houses, it, it triggers that, right? Yeah. So three tenants, that's it, single, um, single leases, one tenant, one lease, okay, maximum of three. 
As far as, I guess, traditional investment, as we sort of noted already, it's got one tenant, which could be a family in that case, but it's got one income um, and that's it. You know, whereas the for the investor, having three incomes is great, like we mentioned, but I guess the, the great thing here is it accommodates sort of three tenants and effectively as a result, that's that's two extra people that are being looked after and easing that rental pressure, the market pressure, and it meets that increasing demand of rentals that are, that are required. So that's how it combats, combats the rental crisis. I think it meets the market needs, which is the other one. So the homework we've got, uh, again, it's not about student housing. The homework indicates there's a huge demand for professionals in their 30s. Um, and, and then, as I said before, a growing demand for you know sort of people in their 50s who potentially may have, may have been divorced or whatever may have occurred, but they're just looking for their own private space. And the one thing, if anything we learn out of COVID, Darren, was this is a situation that helps address that because these people, they want their space, but they also want companionship. You know, yep. there's some, some mates sure. to hang around with, some people to you know, go, go and watch a movie with or, or do some sports or whatever, you know. So that's, that's something that's really come out of COVID. And I think that's what put this really on the map in terms of a product that's appealing to and helping an investor, great, the owner, but also the people who are living there. Like they're the ones who can benefit from this and pay 250, 300 bucks a week rather than having to pay four, five, 600 for an overall home. And it gets them in a position where they can help potentially get closer to their own home one day as well. You know, like there's, there's really good benefits. Um, I see um, yeah. Colin, you know, sort of leading down that same path. I mean, I live in Ballarat, you know, I can imagine someone, you know, and, and I know some people who do travel um, quite a distance for work, you know, and they want to, then they often stay. So they go down and they might work in Melbourne for the whole week and then they come home on the weekend. Um, you know, for someone in that sort of situation too, a professional worker, et cetera, um, you know, you can have one of these on the other side of Melbourne, that's your res- residence during the week. You're not there on a weekend. You couldn't care less what happens on a weekend. You don't need much. You just need a bed. It's cheaper than a hotel. Um, yeah. You know, it uh, makes a you know real lot of sense. I really like where it's going. I think, um, Darren, just before you get the next one, the other market that can open up here, and, and I have to say this is subject to, you know, being confirmed by, you know, accountants and brokers and those sorts of people, but I do see an opportunity for couple of mates to buy a home you know themselves uh, a brother and a sister or a couple of siblings you know same things so it actually gives them the opportunity to live in this house together got their own ensuite each and, and off they go do you know what i mean so yeah for sure it does give them an opportunity as well it's not just for investors in that sense is my understanding but i do need i definitely need a bit more homework on that front i need a bit more advice um, to say, no, um, you know, I did hear, yeah. and again, I'm not certainly don't take it as as gospel, but I did hear that even um, some of the grants and stuff now are tied to when you can have siblings doing the same thing. So you know, some of that stuff now starting to look down that path because they're looking at other ways. Governments looking at other ways to get people into home ownership and to start, you know, yeah. I guess really getting them into the market and growing some of their wealth and letting them grow with the market, um, which I think is really clever. So again. Go and talk to a good broker. Talk to, to um, you know, uh, look it up on the government websites and stuff, so that you're well across that. But yeah, I, I agree. I think there's some really good stuff happening in that space. Yeah, right. Um, maybe to uh, head towards the Andy column. Um, it's certainly more affordable than NDIS or dual key. Um, you know, and the NDIS stuff. You know, I, funny. I looked at a contract on one of those the other day. Um, and it blew me away, like how much more expensive that is. Yeah. Like it was, I'm going to say it was hundreds of thousands of dollars more expensive. And again, I'm certainly no expert on NDIS, and it'll depend on what level that you want to get to on that stuff. But this, you know, if you're talking 25 grand on suite uh, options, upgrades, etc., and another 25 grand for furniture, roughly speaking, it's pretty affordable, you know, in terms yeah. of uh, the additional cost. But talk us through that. Yeah, so affordability and compliance is, is probably more simple because affordability, if it's 50K more, 40, 50K, I, I think that that's palatable because of the returns you're getting. And, and I guess the, the exit strategy we mentioned earlier, that you, you can resell, resell that to a broader market um, as opposed to 
you know, those other things. Now, I will say and there's nothing wrong with NDIS or dual key or all those other it's options. Amazing. I think um, they, they have their place, but it's probably they're far more complex to be compliant. They require uh, a lot more money because they require a hell of a lot more in the bill, uh, you know, compliance-wise and, and inclusion-wise. Um, I guess that's that's something I want to highlight. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just I think there's a lot wrong with some of the people trying to sell it who don't understand yeah. it, things like that, but I'll get to that in a minute. As far as co-living, it's a simple um, step up. You know, what we said many times now, adding an ensuite, a couple of goodies. If you've got an opportunity to have three tenants, great, fantastic. But reselling that when you've got an extra strategy, I think that that's part of the appeal, Darren, as a class 1A um, dwelling or, or building. That That's really good. Broad market appeal, like I said, I guess it it's also in terms of that resale, it's a wide range of buyers or families, um, things like that for resale. But it's also something that can appeal for, for people who, I guess, wanted to start with their first home is what we were sort of just discussing, like a couple of friends, you know, siblings, etc. There's an opportunity to do that in a simple format without overcomplicating things. So that appeals there. The challenges, I think, if we're going to talk about NDIS specifically, are, like you said, Darren, they're much more expensive. They actually require, my understanding is they require a commercial loan, which limits the lender's they face severe valuation issues because of their overall price and how they're looked at. Yep. Massively, they have stringent compliance requirements. Like it's a, it's a pretty complex thing, um, and and it makes occupancy and resale really difficult. Um, and with dual key, uh, essentially that uh, that's something that's done in other states mostly quite often and there's some great positives to dual key but i would say again but they're more expensive and they're actually pretty hindered on their capital growth okay so they're probably a couple of things that we don't have to worry about as much and it's a bit more simplified with co-living um yeah so i would say there's there's a lot of questions that come out of it so all the info i've just discussed today darren there'll be people going okay i understand how it works now blah blah and then that leads to what uh, what i'm calling phase two and phase yeah. two is oh but what about uh what about this and what about that? So who pays the utilities? How are tenants selected? Um, how's the, is the finance different? How does insurance work? You know, how does that differ? Um, and the list just goes on. So sure. this, this episode is not about going through all those, right? We, we'd be here for four hours and we're going to do that. But it's just to pique your interest and, and educate you on, on how it can work. And I want to say there, there are certainly some great companies out there who really do understand co-living and have done it for a number of years and NDIS and dual key, right? But unfortunately, there are some, I'm going to call them cowboys out there, Darren, and podcasts uh, that I listen to for property. Uh, another one, they call them spruikers. There's quite a few out there who are pushing these types of investments. Now, these people are promoting unrealistic returns. You see it with NDIS all the time. Um, probably my, what's most scary when I see this stuff is they don't know what they're talking about. They have no idea about the product they're selling. They just put this big, fancy, attractive number on and, and flick it through and try and get a sale on a huge commission. And it, it's a dangerous space in that sense. If you're not dealing with someone who actually cares about you and what you're doing and where it is and why it works for you. And so I think um, oh, some of the examples. I've seen co-living properties advertised that just don't work. The plan's horrendous and don't comply. So be careful of that. You've got to make sure you're complying with the new regulations. Um, I've seen a lot of co-living advertised trying to be a little bit cheaper without split systems to the bedrooms. They're still just doing adducted heating with no cooling at all. Now, if you think about having three tenants come into a house and there's no cooling and there's just ducted heating, that's not going to work well, right? There's going to be an argument about who, what the temperature should be at. Um, so little things like that, they're not included lockable lockable pantry cupboards and things like that. So they're missing the detail, uh, the stuff that a tenant will care about that an investor may not, right? Um, and I think some don't even talk about, they don't mention or discuss finance, insurance, property management. They really just promote some amazing return. So yeah. don't fall for those is the point of this whole thing. We've told you what co-living is, how it works. Don't fall for all that rubbish. Just Take it in your stride. If it's something that you're interested in, then let us know. You can reach out. We can give you more information, but you will go through phase two 
and phase three questions, which get down to the nitty gritty and the detail. And we, we're trying, Darren, at the moment, we, we have a FAQ document that has four pages of questions and answers. And every week we're, I'm up to version, you know, whatever. And then the next version, next version. As we get a question. Yeah, someone asks a question. I'm like, oh, actually, I don't know that. So then we go and get that answer and we pop it yep. on there. So Good. for those interested, Darren, we are going to run a webinar. Um, now, this is us, uh, H&L Victoria, about co-living a couple of weeks from now. So if anyone's interested in joining that, completely free. Now, I'm not talking about... Uh, necessarily just investors or property buyers. I'm talking about land agents. I'm talking about brokers and accountants, whoever it is. If you want to come and learn a bit more about the detail of co-living, there's, a pro there's going to be a webinar we'll run. As I said, it's free. Just register your details and off you go. Like we will have um, the property management company will come and join us on that and we'll go from there. So That's I don't great. mean to promote it, Darren, I guess, but no, it's, mate, yeah, uh, it's something that will it's help. Important. I think it'll really... Um cement people's uh, knowledge on the subject. So I think it's great. Um, mm. Obviously, uh, we'll put a link to the um, webinar on our website, homebuildinghub.com.au. Um, yeah, no, I think uh, if you're keen to learn more, jump on the webinar, you'll really pick up a whole lot of detail at that point too. So yeah, great, mate. Has it I given think, you uh, some insights? Yeah, absolutely. I yeah. think I've taken a fair bit away from this episode. I'm feeling like uh, I'm the novice sitting here learning along the way, and that's part of what this is about, mate. We've all got, you know, certainly between us we've got different skills that I think we're able to share, and I think today, uh, mate, I've taken a fair bit away from that from you. So thank you. I really appreciate it. No Hopefully worries. our listeners have done the same. No worries. They can have it for free, but I'll send you the bill, Daz. Beautiful. Thanks, mate. I really appreciate it. Excellent. Well, guys, hopefully that's informative. There's plenty more to learn on that front for all of us. But, uh, yeah, we see a good opportunity for it for, for people who, who like what they see and uh, happy to help, I guess. So, yeah, thanks again for watching. Thanks again for listening. Please leave us a five-star review on the platform you're on. That would be very helpful. And, uh, yeah, homebuildinghub.com.au for any questions. Let's go from there. We look, look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. Thanks. Bye. Cheers. Thanks for listening to the Home Building Hub. As part of the podcast, we have to be a little careful to cover ourselves on a legal standpoint. So we do have a disclaimer. Whilst we're all about providing value to you, this podcast should not be considered legal or financial advice. It does contain general information only, and you should seek out independent professional advice on your own personal situation before you make any legal or financial decisions.